Apple in the early 2010s were on a roll with their iPhone line. They had just finished up with their iPhone 4, which was incredibly successful and paved the way for how iPhones would be designed. The iPhone 5 was really a staple in many households, as this phone was the first for many growing up. In my experience, this was my first phone ever. It gained a reputation of utmost excellence and simplicity. This idea of simplicity was further explored with their 5C line, but that's for another video. As for many, the iPhone 5 revolutionized how people would interact with their phones, with introducing a bigger screen, sleeker design, and modern interface. The iPhone 5 was my daily driver for many years, and it served me greatly. But that begs the question, how does the iPhone 5 hold up in 2020? If you guys haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. I'm going to be posting more of these Is It Worth It's every week and by you hitting the subscribe button, you'll be showing your support. But without further ado, let's get right into it. I remember doing one of these videos for the iPhone back in 2018 and for me at the time, it was an alright video. It had some flaws in it such as having no script and a lot of camera work wasn't up to scratch but it got a lot of people watching it so I guess I did something right. But for me, it wasn't a video I was proud of as I missed so many important bits that the iPhone 5 was known for. Enjoy this somewhat remastered video of the iPhone 5. Rumors about the iPhone 5 began shortly after the announcement of the iPhone 4S. This really wasn't a surprise, as rumors for Apple phones begin after an hour of the previous phone's release. On July 30th, 2012, reports pinpointed the dates on which the iPhone 5 would be unveiled and released, along with some accurate predictions of its features. On September 4th, 2012, Apple announced that they would be hosting an event at the Buena Center of Arts in San Francisco in September of 2012. A shadow of the numeral 5 was featured in the invitation sent to the media, suggesting that the next iPhone would be unveiled at the event. Production of the iPhone began way back in 2010, with Apple writing up ideas of what the design would look like. Apple promised many design ideas to consumers, such as its thickness. The iPhone 5 would be thinner than the iPhone 4 and be taller, with a bigger screen. The iPhone 5 featured a major design changes to, in comparison to its predecessor. These included an aluminium-based body, which was thinner and lighter than previous models, a taller screen with a nearly 16x9 aspect ratio, the Apple A6 system on chip, LTE support, and the new lightning cable, which was the charging cable for the phone, which replaced the 30-pin design used by previous iPhone models. This was the second Apple phone to include its new Sony-made 8-megapixel camera, which was first introduced on the iPhone 4S. Apple began taking pre-orders on September 14, 2012, and over 2 million were received within 24 hours. Initial demand for the iPhone 5 exceeded the supply available at launch on September 21, 2012, and it was described by Apple as extraordinary, with pre-orders having sold 20 times faster than its predecessors. While the reception to the iPhone 5 was generally positive, consumers and reviewers noted hardware issues, such as the unintended purple hue in photos taken, and the phone's coding being prone to chipping. There was also mixed reception about Apple's decision to change the charger, which made iPhone 5's compatibility with iPhone 4 accessories completely non-existent. The iPhone 5 series would be Steve Jobs' last phone that he ever worked on, as he would later pass in 2011 due to pancreatic cancer. This series would be Steve Jobs' last and it needed to be up to scratch to meet not only his expectations but the consumers as well. The iPhone 5 would create controversy in just a few short months of its production, as some manufacturer workers would later go on strike in the Foxconn factory where the iPhone 5 would be created. Reasons on why they would go on strike is attributed to the fact that they were forced to work on public holidays and that Apple became stricter on the quality control aspects of the iPhone 5. These arguments would later turn into brawls as concerns of many workers were not met. These issues caused delays and were one of the factors on why the iPhone 5 couldn't meet demand. After the iPhone 5 was released, it was met with critical amounts of success as it would later go on to sell 70 million units. The iPhone 5 shipped with an ARM V7 dual core CPU clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, a PowerVI SGX GPU, one gigabyte of DDR2 memory, a four inch, 1136 by 640 pixel display and storage options up to 16 to 64 gigabytes along with a 1400 milliamp hour battery which gave the iPhone about 8 to 10 hours of usage. Apple emphasized the improved build quality of the iPhone 5 at its press event. The frame used in previous versions was redesigned to use an aluminium composite frame. The iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S used stainless steel instead of aluminium due to Steve Jobs' preference for the metal, which he thought looks beautiful when it wears. The design of the iPhone 5 is very small compared to a lot of the bigger phones from today. When comparing it to my iPhone 6 Plus, it practically looks minuscule. 
It's easy to hold and doesn't have a lot of weight. When placing it in my pocket, I could barely tell it was there. It is sleek with an aluminium finish and it looks great with any of the color options you decide to pick. I picked the white and silver version, although there's a space gray option. When you first look at the phone, you're greeted with the display, which is four inches. Below that, you have the home button and on the side, you have the volume buttons. On the bottom side, you have the speakers and headphone jack. The speakers sound good and are alright for watching movies and music. You also have the new lightning connector, which is what Apple would use for all their chargers. The iPhone is basically a longer version of the iPhone 4. It feels really solid and feels super compact. The cameras on the iPhone 5 are alright. The front one does 720p video at 1.2 megapixels. The back camera does 1080p video at 8 megapixels. They look quite good for the average photo, but as soon as you use the camera at night, the image starts to fall apart. Now, with all the aesthetics of the phone covered, let's take a look at the operating system and its features. The iPhone 5 shipped with iOS 6, which was released on September 19th, 2012. The iPhone 5 can now act as a hotspot, sharing its internet connection over Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB. The iPhone 5 can also play music, movies, television, ebooks, audiobooks, and podcasts. Like the iPhone 4S, the iPhone 5 has Siri that allows the user to operate the iPhone by spoken commands. The software was improved in iOS 6 to include the ability to make restaurant reservations, launch apps, dictate Facebook or Twitter updates, and retrieve movie reviews and detailed sports statistics. iOS 6 featured several new and updated apps, which include Apple Maps and Passport. Apple's built-in Maps app, which replaced the former apps powered by Google Maps, had been universally derided and lacked many features present in competing Maps apps. This version of the Apple Maps was criticized heavily as it lacked features and pointed many users in the wrong direction of where they wanted to go. Using the latest version of iOS, which is 10.3.4. It was released in 2019 and it was the last update that the phone would ever get. iOS 10 feels snappy on the iPhone 5, it's fast when opening first party apps and third party ones. Instagram loads easily but has some lag present when opening the camera and using the search bar. Using YouTube is fast and it loads video with some slowdown. These slowdowns that you see on the iPhone 5 will only get worse as apps get optimized more for the newer iPhones. Games in the system have minimal lag, but it's only when you get into 3D intensive games when you start to see a slowdown. As for using the iPhone 5 now, it has been so far a great and convenient experience. The phone does everything you need it to do such as scrolling through social media and making phone calls. It does this with minimal lag but I see this changing as the phone gets older. Personally I wouldn't use it every day as it doesn't have a big screen and the battery is practically useless at this point. The battery life has been so far terrible and it only lasts for about 1-4 to four hours. It used to last up to 10 hours but with time the batteries get weaker. I wouldn't really suggest this phone to anyone at the moment as it really has no support for it. The battery life is bad and wouldn't last for a day. If you really want to get an iPhone, then I would recommend an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8, as they are cheap and are still supported by Apple. The iPhone 5 was just added to the obsolete list of Apple's website. As I said before, buying this iPhone now is cheap, as some models go for around $50 to $100. It's inexpensive and useful, but has poor battery life and isn't supported by Apple anymore. The iPhone 5 so far was a great iPhone, with it selling millions of units and became one of Apple's greatest phones. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Is this phone worth it in 2020? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like if you liked it or dislike if you didn't like it. Comment down below what is your favorite video. Um, anyway, I'd like to see you all.